Hey guys, Drifter here. Welcome to Ghost in Depth. In today's episode, we're going to be reviewing the Vepr 2.0. The gameplay that you're going to see is me using the Vepr, of course, with my very aggressive rushing class. That's what we're going to be focusing on today, is how to use this weapon aggressively and why it's so good at rushing and hipfire. Playing on the map Trimmer, rocking the Spectrum camo with Rapid Fire and Muzzle Break. That's going to be part of the recommended class. This weapon is going to get a re-review re because it has been buffed recently. I think it got the most minor buff of all of the range buffs to SMGs. However, in my initial in-depth review I forgot to discuss the number one most important feature of this weapon its only redeeming attribute because it is generally somewhat underpowered and that's its insane sprint out time that makes it very good for hip firing but before we jump into that we're gonna talk about its range even after the buff it still has a very short three shot kill range of approximately 14 meters and four shot kill range of approximately 21 meters the buff did not affect the range on this weapon very much and if you look at it just on a damage over range and shots over range it is not a very competitive weapon even after the buff if I run muzzle break on it that'll increase these ranges a little bit to about 17 meters and about 25 meters but it's still not very impressive what is impressive about the Vepr is that it has a much faster sprint out time than any other weapon in the game with the exception of course the minigun that's always just kind of ready to fire based on the nature of what it is and the sprint out time is the amount of time it takes for you to go from fully sprinting running as fast as you can to when you pull the trigger and the weapon shoots there is a delay heavier weapons have more delay sniper rifles have more delay than pistols and submachine guns, but this has the least amount of delay of any weapon, at least of all the uh, fully automatic weapons for that matter, and it's less than half of that of all the other submachine guns. It is very, very dangerous, and when you stack that with ready up, which causes you to have less sprint out anyway, your sprint out with ready up is .072 seconds. That means when you pull the trigger, this gun will shoot in 72 milliseconds, which is about four and a half frames. It'll probably round up to a total of five frames, which is faster than most people can react and it'll really help you online in those somewhat laggy situations when people are able to kind of uh, aim down sights around corners if they're already ADS and you're sprinting you can't compete this will help you compete with that because you can just hose out bullets much much faster it does have a weakness though the aim down sights time on the Vepr is slower than the other machine guns when you aim down sights with the Vepr it is slightly slower than aiming down sights with the other submachine guns the other SMGs are 200 milliseconds this one is 250 milliseconds however if you stack quick draw on that which is very unusual for some machine guns you can drop that down to a much more competitive 142 milliseconds or 0.142 seconds and if you're wondering where I'm getting these numbers from I'm actually gonna give a shout out to ice rink 5 a.m. he's the guy that did this sort of research and I'm basing these off of him we've worked together on projects in the past his information has always been reliable so I just linked his channel down there in the description because I'm trusting his data on this because it's not really available online so if you combine the total sprint to aim down sights time even not even counting hip fire now if you just want to run and just pull the trigger and hip fire it's nearly instant you don't even have to worry about that but if you want to go from the fastest running to aiming down sights with this particular setup it's 214 milliseconds or 0.124 seconds other SMGs are going to be slower than that by approximately 74 milliseconds which again is about five frames so you can already be shooting while people are trying to get out of their sprint uh, and this allows you to aim down sights quickly and hope to counter some of those lovely light machine gun corner cam thermal guys that we have to deal with. One of the other competitive things about the Vepr is that it does fire faster than the other SMGs, or the other, we'll say, heavy SMGs, such as the MTAR and the Vector. The MTAR and the Vector shoot about 720 RPM, however, the Vepr here fires at 782 RPM, and I would like to make a note that that's measured. Now, if you go get on a stat sheet, sheet or like somewhere online, it's going to show it shooting something like 815, but we know Call of Duty Ghost rounds the, these numbers down, and in the case of the Vepr, it rounds this one down to about 780. When you put rapid fire on it, it fires at approximately the same speed as the B-Zone or the CBJ, which is about 930, maybe a little bit more, 940, 950 depending on your arrangement so it can shoot very very quickly and, and it can shoot very quickly if you're sprinting and just pull the trigger and hold it it'll pop up and spray very very accurately with rapid fire so the class that I recommend with this weapon, if you want to rush, if you want to play aggressive and rush, you run rapid fire and muzzle break, quick draw, and ready up. That's going to allow you to have one of the fastest overall reaction times in the game. And your, your hip fire reaction time is going to be best. I run steady aim on it. That's just kind of the way I like it so that I can uh, move and shoot and spray people very accurately with steady aim. And it's extremely, extremely fast. If I need a little bit more range or if I need a little bit more accuracy, accuracy I can also aim down sights and fire or I can do the steady aim first and then transition into aiming down sights like kind of how some of the pro players do it works very very well but only when you play aggressive 
And to be honest, it's really only up close. Because of the rapid fire and because of the nature of the range and damage on this weapon, it's going to lose very, very hard at long ranges. You can't compete with MTARs and assault rifles. You have to play up close and compete with other fast-firing weapons like the B-Zone and the CBJ. And what you're going to be beating them at is reaction time. You're not going to be beating them at rate of fire. You're going to be beating them purely at reaction time with this class. As for overall viability, I find this to be very, very viable for public matches. You go online, you play Domination, you play Deathmatch, Kill Confirm, Search and Destroy, something like that very viable this works great as far as playing competitively if you're doing GB scrims if you're a pro gamer if you want to be pro if you're doing something with formalized rules you know like competitive Call of Duty this is not going to be for competitive it'll still work very well if you play aggressive and you rush however the penalty for long-range engagements is so extreme that you won't be able to do that at all and that's a versatility trade-off that I don't believe many of you are going to be willing to make well guys, that's all for this episode of In-Depth. I hope that you enjoyed it, and I hope that you learned something useful. If you'd like to check out the previous episode that was on the minigun, it was a fun one, and the next one is going to be on a dog trick that I learned from O Lord O. As always, if you enjoyed, don't forget to like, favorite, and subscribe. Drifter out.